Hello, this is Eric of Sparky Studio, and today I'm talking about NPF battery plates. Here's a battery, and here is a plate. Though this is just one of many that I have. Yes, many of them. And this one right now is connected to one of my dummy batteries. And then I have another one. Oh, and then I have another one. And I have another one. And I have yet another one. That is seven NPF battery plates. So I'm going to give you my experience and why I find certain ones to be better than others. Now, the extra ports on certain ones will be more beneficial than others. All of these, every single one of these seven different plates are out of pocket. You might notice I got a dummy battery here, but uh, my camera I'm recording on also has a dummy battery and it's connected to a battery bank with USB type A. Here's my Andor or Andor, whatever you want to call it, NPF plate, but it only has 7.4 volts out and that is it. There's no other connection at all and there's a little light and it lasts pretty good for battery life. But I can't power my monitor, there's no other port. This is all it's good for, powering the camera. And it only has one screw connection. So not gonna stay fully secure. Right here we have a small rig battery plate. You can see it's small rig. We have 7.4 volts out and a 12 volt out. There's a big opening, that means you can give two screws to the side of a camera cage for mounting, making this more beneficial that's not going to slide around. Both are connected, bare lugs, and if we look through the monitor, the camera is showing full power, so that's a good thing. But one thing we notice, there is no battery indicator other than this light, which I believe turns red at 15%, but it doesn't waste much power with the light on, so that's not bad. The material itself feels to be of plastic, there's no off switch. So that's what kills it for me. This used to be my favorite NPF battery plate. We have a power button, we have a battery life indicator, we have a 12 volt out, a 7.4 volt out. It has only one hole though, so that kind of ruined it somewhat for me because you can't hold it secure. It has USB power out and it has USB-C charging of the battery and it was dependable to do that as well. And for mounting points, we have two mounting points on the back end as well, so you want to mount something to it. And this is made of metal. Sample of one, so I want to know what your thoughts are if you use the same one and what your experience is if you had the same problem. It has a battery indicator. You could turn it off by pressing the button right here. But if you held the button, it won't turn on. It kind of has to be pressed a certain amount of time. Literally three seconds. One, two three on either way it's kind of a halfway house of things i've now switched out the dummy battery because if we notice the battery wasn't full and is it showing full this time nope it's still showing as being a problem or wait am i wrong well usb dummy battery with this works but the barrel connection cannot handle the 15 watts of draw from the camera there's still a part that's a dud about this battery plate if i move this cable just a bit it turns off my monitor so this battery plate despite it being nice is really not dependable and that means no matter which way i slice it it belongs in the garbage now we've got this plastic npf battery plate. Now it says PD, power delivery, but it's power delivery for charging the battery, not power delivery out. I even tried my phone with power delivery charging. No, it doesn't power output, it powers input. So you can charge your NPF battery with this, as well as we have a screw and adapter right here, so we can actually use it for mounting other ways, and it allows two screws, 8 volt, 12 volt, and another 8 volt out. Really pretty cool. And it has a battery indicator. Let's get this connected and see how this works. Here we have this one, and we have the battery indicator. No off switch, easy eject. Now let's try on the monitor and see if the battery level indicator for the camera is still 100%. And here we go. This is made of plastic, nothing too fancy. And if I look, yep, 
the camera is still showing full power. Now, the reason I'm going to toss this one out is because I found when connected to battery to this battery plate, I found the battery drain to be fast. So for me, this became kind of garbage. The camera battery levels tend to show is draining fast, but also if I just leave a battery in here, it drains quickly as well. And there is no off button. We are now at the best three NPF plates I've ever used, at least by my point of view. This is the upgraded model with USB ports. And this one here provides up to 18 watts, this back end one, which means it could power my camera with the dummy battery. This one could power my uh, Tilta Nano 2. Well, I still have my 12 volt and 8 volt plus thread in connection points and an on off switch. However, what was the weak point of this? Well, this one also has power delivery, but you can't use the power delivery, at least I found when the camera's connected because it would flick it on and off, on and off. Even though the power is off, there's no power level indicator. There's a light and it will change colors when the power goes lower, but there's nothing to tell me the actual percentage as we go until we get lower and the light will go red, 12 volts on the one side and eight volt on the other side. Let's use this one and see how this goes. Swing this out and watch how nice and easy this is. No holding the switch, just flick it. It is on and now I can press the power on my little screen here. If we don't get it nice and snug, it can move around a bit. However, this was one of my favorite ones. Being that this can output 18 watts of power on the USB backside here, we can also power my camera with a dummy battery using this particular NPF plate. Oh, and by the way, this is actually made of plastic. Either way, it didn't seem to overheat, worked sufficiently otherwise. I just don't like that one connection point and the fact it was hard to see when it's powered on, unless I faced towards me or something, then you know what? It would have been fine. Now let's go to newer. Now this one's made of metal. There's a 12 volt and a 7.4 volt, but there's no USB connection point. But there is the room for double screw into your cage so it's not going to flims around. So at least we have that option. The power on and power off switch is really nice to have. Now let's get this connected. My biggest complaint about the newer NPF plate is sometimes it doesn't stay consistent about how long to push it for power on. But we can see it's powered on, the little red light there. We can see the battery level indicator, so that's very nice to have. And battery level is showing properly as fully charged. So no worries there. No USB out or even power in to charge the battery. To power off, I'll press the little button at the back and let's see how long it takes. Oh, wow, that turns off pretty fast. Press it back on and we'll see that red light on the monitor when it powers back on. Wait, it's not, ah, see this is what drives me nuts about it. The consistency of pressing it down is inconsistent. That's the greatest weakness of this for me. I don't know if I'm going to press it down for one second or five seconds or seven seconds. Powering off is very consistent. I'm going to power it on again. Okay. Right now. Pressing now. One, two. Look at that. This time was fast. It's just odd. Just odd. But it does work. Now let's go to one of my favorite NPF battery plates, the one I use on my main camera rig and it's all rigged up right here. This one has a connection point at the front here that threads in and that allowed me to connect this uh, Tilta, which clamps in my cables. What are the advantages of this one? We can also again put in multiple screws so it doesn't flims around. We also have an Allen key that's included, yeah right here, to thread this in. And it's also magnetic into place, not a strong magnet, but it, it holds there. So that's very nice to have. And do we have an eject? Yes, we have an eject button right here. And we also have five volts, 2.1 amps out on here, as well as an eight volt connection and a 12 volt connection and a power indicator and a power button. So basically everything you could possibly want. It's made of metal as well. So this one has been 
my absolute favorite. It's now plugged in, and again, I'm going to press the power button. And there we go. We can see the indicator lights here. You can see with both screws here, it really doesn't move around, especially if I really tighten it. Now, the biggest thing you have to worry about in NPF battery plate and a dummy battery is a connection, a barrel lug coming loose because that happened to me one time before. Make sure it's fully inserted or else you might lose your footage. Now, how about the USB one to a battery bank as I'm doing on my other camera? Wait, you can't see that right now. Let me change that for you. The one definitive advantage of a battery bank is it's very simple to get. They're fairly cheap. And this particular one has a battery life indicator by percentage point. Though they can be quite heavy, of course, just like NPF, but the NPF plates are more streamlined, I find, in terms of shape and size. But hey, either way it works, if it works for you. These two are the ones I mainly use because I know my battery level. I don't have the extra output port, but what if I do want extra ports? What if I do want to power my Telta Nano? That's where batteries like this come into place where we have USB out power on these particular batteries. This one's massive. Despite all the testing I did with all these plates over time, there's one thing I cannot answer. It is how many amps output these plates can put out. Now the newer one is listed as two amps. It powers my 15 watt rated Fujifilm XS20 just fine. But if I had an X-T4, it actually might be a problem because that camera seemed to have more power draw. Keep in mind, dummy batteries are different and the standards are not going to be all the same. So if you're having a problem with only one plate and that's all you tested, it could be your dummy battery. So be mindful of that one. This is Eric of Sparky Studio. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.